simultaneous translation. If there's a question in Spanish, just put it on, it will come across in English. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. If you'd like a question for Frank, please raise your hand and we'll go around the room. We're going to start at the front here with TalkSport and Ian Abraham Smith. Hi, Frank. Hi, Moose. How are you? Good, thanks. Um, first, from the outside, it looks a bit like Chelsea's broken at the moment. Is that fair? And secondly, if you get through tomorrow, is it a bigger achievement in football in terms? When you won it in 2012, you were um, We're not where we want to be. I think the word broken is a bit much, um, but we're not where we want to be. And that's clear. League position is a reality in the Premier League. We're 2 0 down in this game. So I think um, those things are just reality. We have to work against that and show in every way we can um, because we're in that moment. Um, I don't think anything tomorrow will be. the, the, the better than winning the Champions League, um, from my opinion, because we had many moments on that run of uh, difficult difficulties against Barcelona and that game and Napoli and all this. That was a, it was a huge run where there were a lot of big achievements. But, but I understand your point. I think for us, considering the result now, uh, considering the team we're up against, because in our moment that we're in, we have to fight really hard to make it happen. So, of course, that would be special. Thank you. Gary Cottrell, Sky Sports. Hello, Hello Frank. Hi, Gary. Hi. Obviously, you were disappointed after the game on, on Saturday. You used words like um, lacking capacity and in need of physical work. You, you, you were speaking on large about mental work as well, but some have taken you saying lacking capacity and in need of physical work as a criticism of players not being fit enough, so a criticism of the previous regime. Is that, is that how you meant it? No, I think that's how the, you've taken it on that side because I think uh, I'm always big in football on, on personal responsibility. Um, as a player and as a group, to be fair. So when I'm talking like that, I'm not blaming anyone else than what I see now and what I see in the future. So it's just something that we have to address now um, and address going forward because it's a, it's a big part of the game and we do a lot of work and, and uh, delve into the, the data, the statistics, the output of what we're putting into games. And this is absolutely, I think I said it the other day, not a question of commitment of players, but my job is to try and focus in on points that we can get better at to compete at this level. And um, I think it's something that I, I know as a, as a short-term thing that we can certainly improve on, and that's, that's what we're going to do. Matt Law, Daily Telegraph. Hi, Frank. Hi. Um, the, after the, the weekend's defeat, um, the owners went into the dressing room, and I believe Todd addressed the players and had some quite strong language and encouraging language, both, both things by the sounds of it. Kep has just said that it's normal that they go in the dressing room, that they go in the dressing room virtually every game, he said. Is that healthy? Are you comfortable with that? Yeah, I, I am comfortable with that. And um, I think, for me... Um, there was some, maybe some criticism of the, our old owner of, of not coming to the games and not being around. And that wasn't always true, to be fair. But I think um, when an owner is very vested in their interest in the team and wanting to help and improve, I think it's their prerogative to, to have the, uh, the, the input that they want. Um, I remember the moments as a player of owners first coming into dressing rooms actually happened here at Chelsea. And it never really happened to me before. And I remember being really happy that the, the owner, you know, you could touch them, you could high-five them, you could listen to them and feel them. So I don't think that's a bad thing in terms of the identity of the club and where you want to get to. So I have no problem with it and from my point of view. I had my things to say after the game. If an owner comes in and wants to be positive, wants to speak to the players, um, then I think it's absolutely his part to do that. And, um, and like Kepper, I think, has said there, that it's, it's, it can be very regular in the modern day. Um, no problem. In fact, it shows passion and that's the first thing that I like. So, yeah, that's it. John Cross, Thanks, Daily Mirror. Hello, Frank. I was just going to ask you, the, 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 um, how important is the atmosphere tomorrow night if you want to turn this tie around? Because there's obviously a bit of anger and angst towards particularly the ownership on, on Saturday and the atmosphere that can be you know, negative. So how important is it, is it that it's positive and get to be on the team tomorrow night? I've got no doubt it will be positive. And when I talk about that, I talk about the lead to the game, the start of the game. I think the rest is a little bit down to us. It's down to us as a team to, to, to play with a, 
a real desire and a know-how to, to try and turn this game around, I think, for sure. I've been here too many times in this level of game at Chelsea, at Stamford Bridge, and an evening midweek Champions League knockout game to understand that, that, that the atmosphere is going to be great. And again, now it's time for us to tap into that early in the game and make sure that we engage the crowd throughout um, because they can help us, for sure. That's why we're at home. It's, you know, that's why this two-legged competition is the best out there. So, yeah, I'm, I'm confident in that. We just need to play our part. Carrie Brown, be in. Matt, pass the point to Carrie, and then you can have it back. Thanks. Hi, Frank. Um, Hi. Just taking you back to two big Champions League moments, 2012 in the new Camp, uh, a huge occasion, uh, and the man with the winner at the last moment, a man that we knew was quality and, and couldn't find that quality, Fernando Torres, who then went on a great run of form after that, and also the cruelty of you leaving the club as the manager in your last stage when you got them into the last 16. In terms of the players you have in that dressing room, you talk about you have complete belief in their commitment, but just the true performances for them aren't coming through. Does this give you an opportunity to show them that it happened to Fernando Torres in a competition away from the league? You can really prove yourself. And you, you left those players who went all the way to that Champions League final to win it against City. Do you still see there is enough of that culture and belief in that dressing room to put on that performance again tomorrow night? Yeah, I, th I think anything is possible in football anyway. And um, there's no doubt that we're, in, we're a competitive team and we deserve to be here in, in this stage of the competition. We also understand that the opponent is really high level. Uh, I, th I think it's going to be careful to, to compare to previous moments or actions or games because, you know, for all... For, a, for a Fernando Torres running through and rounding the keeper and scoring this amazing goal for Chelsea, there's like a big body of work behind that and maybe good and bad and difficult moments. And that's a personal thing for Fernando and was a personal, it was a group thing for us. We'd lost semi-finals, we'd lost quarter-finals, we'd lost the final. So there's always a lot of backstory to it. The only thing, you know, when you look back on those things is to say that it's always possible to create that story and start that story. And we do have that opportunity. So I think it's not worth comparing too much. Um, it's just worth focusing on the here and now with, with, a, with a little understanding that if we get things right, if we work hard, uh, if we do the right things in the game, then anything is possible. Is there enough that? Hang on, Kerry. We're going to give everyone a chance. Otherwise, there's too many people here. Front row, gentlemen on the right-hand side with the headphones on. Pass the microphone along, please. Thank you. Hola, Frank. Hi Frank, you've been in, in football for a long time as a player and a coach, how do you explain the strength that Real Madrid have over the years, even if they're not playing well in the Champions, they're always, doesn't matter if they've signed new players or not, they're always performing well in the Champions. They're always a competitive team in the Champions League, where, where does this come from? know the, the exact Real Madrid story from, from inside but to look on the outside firstly they have a great coach who I understand very well from working with him um, so I think he needs to take full credit in this moment because what we saw last year in their run to the final was an amazing resilience that he led and then what's very visible from the outside is a core of players that have been there for a very long time playing at the highest highest level year after year which means that they have a good talent and work ethic and leadership skills and they drive the group as I see it. And um, I'm talking obviously about Modric and Cruz and Benzema uh, and others. So I think um, they have a very good recipe for a team that will be successful over a period of time. They also have individual talent that can win a game in any moment, whether they are in control or without control. And I think those special players at the top end of the pitch at this level can be absolutely crucial to success and they have those. So they have a very good um, overall um, unit to have the success that they've had for so long. Matt Dunn. Hi, Frank. Um, uh, we spoke about the owners a few moments ago. Um, regardless what happens to you in the next few weeks in the club, I'm sure as a sort of club hero, your interest is in Chelsea being in the best shape it is when you leave going forward. With that in mind, are you able to help 
the owners through some of the intricacies of English football? Because, I mean, I don't know, we all winced for you, I think, when, when Todd Bowley was pro proudly predicting a 3-0 win in Madrid. And it's not the sort of thing perhaps an English owner does. And there's certain things that seem to be rankling with the fans that, that perhaps they need to learn culturally, should we say, about the game over here. Is that something you can help them with? No, I'll let that... I'll let, all I'll do is speak honestly about how I see the club and, what, and do my work. And whilst I'm here and I am manager of the football club in this period, I'll speak honestly. I'll do my work on the training ground and, be as, and have a lot of communication because that's, that's my job and I'm good with that and I have a lot of care for this club. And that's my job. It's not my, it's not my uh, job to sort of um, consider people's approaches or these things. I'll just speak honestly myself about what I see. Andy Dillon, the son. Hi, Frank. Um, if I might just go back to a, a couple of earlier points. Um, the first one, we've spoken a bit about the owners, and I, I saw the photograph. It was quite a striking photograph from Saturday of Todd talking to the guy leaning over and they're having a discussion. I just wonder if you think that sort of thing actually can be helpful to an American owner who's coming over here to, you know, to have a fan in his face and let him know how it... Because he kind of then sees what it means to people at the coalface and whether that's a good learning experience for him. And, and secondly, you were, were talking about the, the players, and you mentioned personal responsibility and the data and stuff like that. I just wonder if you, you think then, as a group, these players could maybe give a bit more physically, um, and, and if that's the point you're driving at with that. No, I'll, I'll answer that a bit first. I'll, sorry, come back to that. But no, I think, listen, again, I think I said it the other day, I said it earlier. I'm not questioning commitment of the players. I think sometimes... Um, I got asked after the game um, on Saturday if the, if the players look hungry enough, and, it's, as I, and I answered it in, a, in the terms that people. It's very, I think it's very easy to get to that point from the outside of does a player look hungry enough when there are a lot of factors that, that come together to try and get a team playing at its peak and the confidence, you know, belief, um, the physical nature of the game, the tactical nature of the game. So I think they're all, you know, I'm. It feels like everyone's jumping on this physical thing. It's a part of the game that's very important. It always will be. But there are also other parts of the game that we can improve on. So it's just, you know, from my point of view, it's just trying to attack those things. And, you know, I call them the baseline things because I think without those baseline things, you know, we'll, we will struggle at top-end football to get results. So, you know, we're, we're trying to uh, broach those things together in quick time to get quick results. And the reality is some of them take time to get us better so that's fine you know tomorrow's a huge game that we need to just focus on in terms of the the ownership and fans I think passion goes both ways the fans show passion I don't think that the ownership or anybody would come and be involved in Chelsea and, and, and expect anything else and the, the fans to have a complete passion for wanting this club to do well we've been fortunate enough to be very successful for a lot of years last 20 years so um, which means you want more of it um, so I, I don't think that anyone needs schooling on that I think that's very clear and I think also with the word passion coming from both sides passionate owners passionate owners that want to make a difference and have a real vision for the club um, and we're in probably the early stages of a process on those terms uh, and again keep getting asked a lot of the same sort of stuff again about when you look at processes in the Premier League and teams that want to rise to stay at the top and at the minute we're just off that we know um, people always question everything in the beginning and in the early part of the process and, and I think there's an important part for us working is that we just kind of get our heads down and work with what's in front of us. But passion and that is normal. I think I don't think it's a problem. I certainly don't find it as a problem. We can all be passionate together and work in the same direction to get where we want to be. OK, we've got time for two more and then we're going to have to finish. Jacob and then Adrian to finish. Uh, Chelsea last year in this time are probably in a worse situation uh, than, than this time. Have you used, used that game at all? Will you study that game to see where potentially um, there might be a way to... Hurt Madrid, and also last week there were times when you you did cause them problems. Did you see enough in that first leg that if you play at the kind of pace intensity you're talking about, that that there is a chance of turning this around? Yeah, I've studied both games from last year. I, I don't always study games from previous years, but I think it was important because there's a lot of similarities in personnel through the team, and so I, th I felt it was important for for my, myself and the staff to look at that. Um, we also have the quick reference of last week in terms of you know Madrid and how they generally set up and the, the threats that they have and how we want to approach that. I think um, you talk about last week, we had opportunities to score there and make that, the scoreline better. Um, 
but at the same time there were a lot of things that we could have done better in that game I, mean, I felt it in game and I feel it even more having reviewed the game there were things that we wanted to do from the outset that we didn't do well enough throughout the game uh, and I'm not just talking about the physical side there I'm talking about you know at this level in terms of our use of the ball so I think we can improve on that tomorrow and we have to improve on that tomorrow to, to have a, a better chance of turning this game around. So that's for us to work on and, um, and hopefully you, you see the fruits of that in the game tomorrow because the players, uh, I'm quite clear with the players of where I see with that and I know that the players have the capacity to really give this a good go but we must get our game right and, uh, and be better than we were last week. OK, last question, Adrian Kajimba. Frank, because of how the season's gone, uh, you're in a situation where if tomorrow doesn't go to plan, then the sort of main goals that Chelsea would have at the start of the season will all be gone. I just wondered how you may have dealt with that as a group and with the players. Is that sort of unav- a pressure that sort of you, you can't avoid and, and they just have to, to handle that? I think so. And I, I've got no problem with it. I'm very proud to manage this club. And, you know, w- w- what will be will be tomorrow night. We'll give everything. We want to go through the tie. Um, but also every game you play for Chelsea is an opportunity to, to, to win games and particularly with our form this season to try and get back to a consistent feeling that that's possible so nothing could be uh, could, ha- could have less on it as far as I'm concerned every game we play Madrid Brentford Arsenal going forward all through the game so we play Newcastle here in the last day is, 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 is and should be a huge game for us because of where we're at because individuals myself included the collective we all want to prove when you, wear, when, you, when you represent Chelsea. So I understand it will be very important whatever, whatever way the result goes tomorrow that we keep working until, we, until the end. Okay, I'll leave it there. Thank you, everybody. Thanks all.